Hi, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T Touch practitioner for animals and people. This is Tristan. He's a corgi. And we're getting ready for over a foot of snow. That's higher than my corgi. <laughs> we still have our agility course for one more day, and then it's going to be all over. Danny, I know you're getting all snowed up and you don't feel sorry for me. <laughs> it's like 32 with the snow here, and not 15. <laughs> So we're going to continue our series today. I hope everyone had a happy Thanksgiving and uh, remember to be especially thankful for dogs. Um, we're going to continue our series on sounds dogs make and we're going to talk about baying today. I hope my hound lady is listening who wrote about baying. <laughs> um, so the idea of baying, anybody who has a hound knows what baying is. Um, you know, there's a beagle that used to bay across the street from me, and of course I've ridden horses for years and sadly hunted fox, but not actual fox. And there's plenty of baying with those hounds, and lots of people who have coon hounds know what baying is. And baying is not the same as howling. Baying is continuous uh, crying out. And the word bay comes from originally when dogs used to circle uh, a wild boar and keep it at bay. Um, and circle it up and keep it from moving so that the hunters could come and get it. Um, and that's where the word baying comes from. And it's a very ancient word. I mean, it's one of the first things dogs were used for was hunting game, of course. So um, a howl is just like one long note, like a ooh. Baying is like arr, arr, arr. And coon hounds in particular, if you've ever read Where the Red Fern Grows, which I highly recommend, but it's sad, um, it's about this little boy who really wants some coon hounds and he finally gets some pups and he trains them and they're really, really good and they win a lot of contests. Um, and of course they get old at the end and they are no longer here. But anybody who reads a good dog story knows that's gonna happen. But in that story, you can learn about all the different cries that the hounds make when they're baying. Everyone can identify their own hound sound and the sound of the hound when he's on the hunt, when he's captured something, and when he's treated. There are many kinds of baying, and I've seen this more myself with foxhounds. You know, there's a kind of sound they make that's the joyful, like we're going out, we're smelling, they've caught a scent, there's a different kind of baying, and then there's the kind of baying when they're in pursuit, which is all different sounds. But it's a very... Uh, interactive way dogs have communicating with each other and with us when they're baying and they're on a scent. It's a really different sound. Baying is something we see most often in scent hounds. Um, they're not as fast as sight hounds are. Sight hounds will, like if you've ever seen a feral hound work, you'll see a rabbit somewhere and that sight hound will be on that rabbit in a second. But scent hounds follow the scent and it's a longer drawn out process and then they have to corner whatever it is they're chasing. So if they keep making the noise while they're on the track of prey, that is baying. And they will do that to let the hunters know where the prey is going and also to communicate with the other hounds so that it's a group thing when you're hunting. Um, and one of the things in the Red Fern Grows that he talks about is his two dogs hunting together so well and one's intelligence being met by the other's athleticism and one's smallness being met by the other one's size so that they can communicate with each other and when one's got uh, the prey cornered, the other one can come and you know assist or chase it out of a, a small area so that the bigger dog can continue on the pursuit and then let the hunters know where this uh, prey is. So, um, you know, baying is a really important thing that we have taught dogs to do and beagles do this, all kinds of hounds do this. Um, I think I've seen plenty of people with basset hounds tell me about this too, that they bay um, in the same way some of our other dogs might bark. Um, when they want their dinner, instead of going rough, 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 they might go, oh, 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 because that is so in the nature of a basset hound. 
Um, and bloodhounds too, people have told me that they do this. So baying is a really important sound that dogs make. It is a good way to communicate to us and it is a good way to communicate with each other. And you know, it's a, a way that dogs communicate to work in a pack. And that's how, you know, they work with us. Same way, right Tristan? He says, I don't bay. I don't even know what baying sounds like, hardly. <laughs> we don't go to many hound shows. And it's a very different sound. I mean, certainly the northern breeds, Malmutes and Huskies and Sammies, they all howl. It's very different than this baying. This baying is a continuous, uh, repeated kind of a howl, but it's got a really loud, sharp um, sound at the beginning of it. And you can hear a hound baying miles off. When we lived in Virginia, you could hear them. And when I have been fox hunting or riding in an area where other people are fox hunting, you can hear the hounds far away. And there's all kinds of uh, words that we use to describe the baying of foxhounds in particular. Um, when they're in full cry, that's when they have found the fox and they're chasing him and you know maybe they've even had a sighting and they're very excited and they're communicating with each other about where that fox is going. And of course, foxhounds are not supposed to kill a fox. The people are. <laughs> so they're supposed to run him into ground and then they send in a Jack Russell or something to get him out. Um, and uh, usually it is a Jack Russell Terrier that will come and like flush him out. And then the hounds will either chase him again or maybe um, they'll have another dog that will kill the fox. But generally, um, hounds don't do the killing. It's the people that are with them. So bang is a really important sound that dogs make. And if you happen to have a beagle and live in an apartment complex where the dogs are not allowed to bark, you are going to have a hard time because beagles and a lot of these hounds, um, coon hounds, they just love to bay. And it is so endemic to their breed that they have to make this baying sound. And so to expect a dog like a beagle or a coon hound to be quiet in a busy apartment complex is really asking a lot from them. And I don't recommend getting that breed. You know, you'd be much better off um, not with a yappy small breed like a uh, Dachshund or a Chihuahua, but with like a quieter breed, maybe a Maltese. They're not big barkers. So, bang, very important sound that dogs make. And of course, my dog does not make that sound at all. And I've got to say, I know a lot of people with senior coon hounds, and as they get older and slow down, those guys are big couch potatoes. Um, but boy, if I am walking with a coon hound and there is a rabbit, <laughs> <laughs> this dog that might be 12 years old will start to bay and it is such a joyful sound um, when a, a coon hound is baying. So uh, congrats to the people that have the coon hounds and appreciate the baying because it is an amazing sound and I certainly do love the sound of a hound baying but I'm glad I don't live with one. I like the loud yippee bark instead. <laughs> so. Um, if you have some recordings of your dogs baying, Danny lives next door to three beagles. I'm sure she has some sounds of baying and howling. Um, you go ahead and post them here. That would be great for people to hear it if you haven't heard it because it's a really different kind of sound. And if you don't have a hound, you might not have heard it. Of course, you can Google it and go to YouTube. I'm sure there's all kinds of sounds of hounds baying there. Um, but it is, if you do have one that bays, start to really pay attention to the different sounds of baying that they make. Um, especially if you have like a beagle, a lot of people have beagles as pets because of Snoopy and because they're cute. And if you're walking with them on a leash and they start to uh, pursue something, that's when you'll get an opportunity to see different kinds of baying. Um, a lot of people with beagles tell me that they bay when the people come home. So they'll hear your car pull up and they'll start baying. Um, and you know, bark you up all the way into the house the same way this dog would for me. So, um, thanks, an important thing. So, thanks for joining us for this quick episode of Conversations with a Corgi. I feel very fulfilled because I went out and got gas and got the oil change in the car and made quite a few other stops um, before I did this today because we are having a foot to two feet of snow, which is an awful lot for our first snowfall. Uh, I'm not excited about it. Anyway, so we have to be ready for that. <laughs> so everybody else stay safe in this weather. If you're in the mid-Atlantic, be careful with the ice that's coming. And let's see. I don't know when I'll be back. I've got my job as an educator Monday and Tuesday, dog school on Wednesday, possibly Thursday. But if our 
educator work gets canceled on Monday or, or Tuesday. I don't know what days I'll be around next week. It'll be all chaos. So everybody have a great day and we'll catch up with you later. Enjoy the turkey soup that you're probably eating by now. Dogs can't have that. All right, we'll see ya. Everybody have a great day.